Welcome to the message of the Bible GPS. Now, in today's message, we're going to focus on something that I think so many people wrestle with. I've been listening to a lot of people lately, and it's amazing how many people feel unworthy, how many people don't believe in their own abilities. So many people have a low self-esteem, they are afraid of the future, they don't know how to move forward, and they feel insecure. So what do you do when you feel like that? Well, you can probably buy a self-help book, you can go on YouTube and listen to many motivational videos, and those things can be helpful. But I think there is something better, and that is you, we need to go to God's Word, the Bible. Well, then you can say, but why do I need to go to the Bible? Because the Bible is all about believing in God, believing in Jesus. Well, I think that's true, but that's only the one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is something that we seldom hear, and that is God believes in you. Jesus believes in you. God believes in your abilities. You don't need to suffer from a low self-esteem. You don't need to feel insecure or afraid or unworthy because God believes in you. Yes, we also need to believe in God, but God really believes in you. I give you a few examples. There's the well-known Moses. You know, God talked to him through a burning bush and God said, I want you to take all my people out of Egypt. And Moses said, but who am I? To do that you see he felt unworthy who am I to do that that I should do that and then he also said but what if the people don't believe and don't listen to me you see he was afraid and then he also said but I cannot speak well I'm suffering from a speech impediment and God said don't worry Moses you are my man and we know that Moses took the Israelites out of Egypt in the midst of him feeling insecure, afraid, and overwhelmed. Why? Because God believed in Moses. And then there is Gideon. You know, the angel went to Gideon and he said, you know what, I want you to protect my people from the Midianites, to rescue them from the Midianites. And then Gideon also said, you know, but I'm coming from the weakest clan, and I'm the least in my family. Why do you ask me? How can I save Israel? You see, he also suffered from insecurity. He suffered from a low self-esteem because he was looking at himself. I'm the least in my family. But what made the difference? God believed in Gideon. That made the difference. And then there is Jeremiah. You know, he was called to be a prophet, to warn the people against the Babylonians that they need to come back to God's word and to obey it. And then he said, but I'm too young. I cannot do that. And he also said, but I cannot speak well. And then God said, don't be afraid. I will be with you. So God was actually telling Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I know you young. I know you feel unworthy. I know you feel that you cannot speak well, but I believe in you. And then we go to the New Testament. There was the Roman soldier. He was a leader of many other Roman soldiers. And his slave got sick. And he was good to the people of God, the Jews. And then he heard about Jesus. Then he sent someone to Jesus and said, I feel unworthy. You can just speak a word and then my slave will be healed. And then Jesus went to his place and he said, you know what? I have never seen someone with so much faith in the whole of Israel. Now, although he felt unworthy, Jesus told him, I believe in you. You have so much faith. And then there's this woman who touched the cloak of Jesus because she was unclean. She had the blood flowing illness. And when you had that illness, you could never go to the temple. You were considered as unclean. So she couldn't experience that her sins have been forgiven. Then she just said, you know what? I just need to touch his cloak, then I will be healed. And she did in the midst of all the crowd. And then Jesus felt the power left him. And Jesus said, who touched me? And then she said, I touch you. She raised her hand. Then Jesus didn't call her unclean. He said, daughter. Your faith has saved you. So he gave her a new self-esteem. You're a daughter. You are welcome in my family. Why? Because Jesus believed in her. 
And there's Peter. Now, Peter was this adrenaline junkie. He was always ready to do the extreme. And he saw Jesus coming, walking on the water. And then he said, I also want to do that. And Jesus said, come. Peter, I believe in you. Come. And Peter walked a little bit. Then he took his eyes off Jesus. He got afraid. And then he started to sing. But he was able to walk on water. Why? Because Jesus believed in him. And there's Jesus himself. You know, when Jesus started his ministry, he was baptized by John the Baptist. And he came out of the water. And what did Jesus hear? He heard the voice of his father who said, There is my son in whom I am well pleased. With those words, Jesus started his three-year public ministry. It's just amazing to know that God, his father, told him, Jesus, I am well pleased with you. And then Jesus started his three-year ministry to the cross. So the Bible tells us that God believes in us. And then also Jesus sent out his disciples to the world. He said, I want you to... To go into this world. Why? Because I believe in you. It's a powerful thing when someone believes in you. I remember when I was in high school, there was a well-known international rugby player shared his testimony in our church. And then he said the first game when I played for my country, the captain ran to me and he just touched me on the back. He said, when I felt his touch, because the captain was a legend, he said, I felt so at peace and I felt so good. Just that touch of that captain made me feel welcome and worthy. And he played an excellent game. Why? Because someone believed in him. The other day, it was actually yesterday, a friend of mine said, you know what, tomorrow is a very important day. I'm going for my test drive. I failed twice. I'm so nervous. I said, you know what, it's okay to be nervous. But when you wake up tomorrow, just wake up with the following thought in your mind. Say to yourself, God is good and today is going to be a wonderful day. I'm going to enjoy this test drive. I'm going to be nervous because that brings the best out of me but it will not overwhelm me and I'm just going to enjoy it. And then she said to me, if I will pass, you will know it, just check my Facebook profile. And I went this morning on Facebook and I saw her with her test drive certificate and then she wrote, thank you, Jesus. You just need people to speak into your life and say, you know what? I believe in you. I told someone the other day, She's so fearful of her kids, with good reason. Someone told me the other day, why would you have kids in this world? It's a dangerous world. I said, no, we need to have kids in this world because they are the light. You see, we as parents many times drive fear into our kids because we actually tell them, we don't believe in you. Don't do this, don't do that. Be aware of that. No, we need to, with our body language and the way we talk, tell our kids mom dad we believe in you thank you for being who you are and when they're going to write an exam or play a game uh, you know in a baseball game or football game talk to your kids and tell them i know you're going to play a good game today i know you're going to give your best i know it because i trust you let us change the way we talk and you will see the difference because God believes in you and therefore we need to believe in our children our grandchildren and our friends tell them say words that are very positive because when people hear that they believe in you then it really inspires you you know I felt it almost six months ago I was a little bit depressed about the GPS journey. We work hard. We didn't get the traction. I felt a little bit overwhelmed as well. And I just wanted to give up. It's tough. It's hard work. <laughs> I feel a bit overwhelmed. But then I met someone who said, I believe in you. 
That inspired me, that helped me, and I still believe in this journey, which we call the Bible GPS. Because God's Word inspires. Because God's Word wants to tell us, God believes in you. Let no one bully you. Let no one tell you you don't have value. God says, I love you so much. I've given my very best, my son Jesus, to die for you. Because I believe in you and you are worthy. Let's pray. God, we want to thank you that you believe in us. It's just amazing to know that the Almighty believe in us. Lord, we many times, like the people in the Bible who complained, I cannot speak well, I'm young, I come from the weakest clan, I'm the least in my family. All of them made one mistake. They thought of what could go wrong. But you, God, you look at us and you say, look at what can go right, because you believe in us. We are so thankful for that. And help us to believe in our kids, our grandchildren, our spouses, our friends. Help us to Lord, to speak language, uh, words of wisdom, words that are positive. Help us in that. Amen. So wherever you are, God has placed you. And God has a purpose for you being there. God wants you to feel good about yourself, to feel worthy because He loves you. And He showed that through the cross when He sent Jesus to die for you. And wherever you go, God wants you to look at people, your spouse, whoever you meet, your family, your friends, your children, and speak words, not what can go wrong, but what can go right. Help people just to feel good about themselves, inspire them and say, I know you can. Focus on what can go right and not on what can go wrong. God bless you. Amen.